Hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week you join me out on the bank and we're in search of roach on the feeder. As you can see on screen now, we're set up in the water and who couldn't be excited by a day's fishing looking out at that view. The venue behind me is one of those classic waters that's got a lot of carp in and with that goes a lot of bait and behind that you can sometimes find a good head of quality roach. It's a venue that I did fish about 10 years ago and had some great memories on this bank and I'm really excited today to be out on the bank targeting those roach again and hopefully we can put one or two together. Really excited to get started, let's waste no time at all, let's have a look at the side tray, the setup and how we're going to approach it. I'm going to start on the feeder, I'm lining up, if you see them reeds over there there's a big clump of tree to the left of it, I'm clipping up with that, probably about... 40 yards out maybe just a nice comfortable cast what happens is it's really shallow in front of me and it's one of the things that you do get with this type of venue <laughs> just part and parcel of it but what you do get it goes out and then drops off and we're fishing into that drop off on the feeder so i've got plenty of bait with me today i've got the ground bait which is the supercharged black and in there i've got some of the polycrum as well you know a nice mix low feed content bit of hemp and that dark mix to sit over the bottom got plenty of red maggots plenty of corn because we do want to be targeting the better quality roach that are in here and we've got loads of the hinders hemp so nice simple side tray but plenty of bait is the key so the rod that i'm using is the cordum all rounder 1.25 pound test curve rod and in the end I've got a one ounce tip. I've teamed that up with a snapper reel and on there I've got six pound line. Down to the business end I've got a small running loop and on there I've got one of the small cordon feeders in dirty gram. A hook link a three pound line down to a size 12 hook, nice and simple. On this venue you can get a lot of roach on the feeder if they turn up but if you can get them going a bit closer in, that's when you can do a real good net of fish. So I have got the waggler set up. If this wind drops, then we can begin to target them a bit closer in. One thing that I always do remember from this venue, whether it was winter or whether it was summer, you had to wait sometimes for them roach to appear. I always imagined they went round the lake in big shoals and you had to wait for one of them shoals to arrive. Well, that is how you want to start a session. I was just tightening the line up <laughs> and the feed has gone straight round. Actually going to leave putting the GoPro on a bit because like I say, on this venue, you did have to wait a while sometimes for the bite, but yeah, that's gone straight round, which is a great sign. And that's an excellent quality roach to start with. One thing that was also a problem was the fish went round in almost like size shoals. If you got the better ones, you always got the better ones. But that used to be the average, believe it or not. So I'm just starting on double maggot and just continuing on it really. Just a case of just seeing what's in the swim really to begin with. And maggot will get you an idea of that quickly but what a beautiful venue to wet a line it's one of them waters that you join a club just for the water and this is most definitely that water for me I say, I'm not giving it too long each cast because I want to get a better bait out there like I say it's a big water and you have got you know carp lads on who are going to put a bit of bait in so you are almost competing with them as well so you've got to be positive you've got to put the bait in to attract that shoal in In loads of indication straight away as soon as that bait's going in and there we go there you go you can see how aggressive the bites are on here hopefully that come out on the gopro it absolutely rips round and i do remember back in the day sharing some of the takes that i got on here and people couldn't believe they were actually roach takes. They thought they were carp. How aggressive the takes are. The third fish of the day, the two maggots hanging out of its mouth. I'm really pleased with the start. A little nudge on the feeder there. Just inducing the bite. You can see a few taps and then just edging that feeder back a bit and moving that bait just seems to always work with these roach on here 
I see just staying on the maggot at the moment. Can say on here it was always a great average stamp. And when that tip just fires round, there's no missing the bite. There's been a few tentative little knocks, but that one there was no missing. Hopefully that just shows why I said at the start, some cards you buy for one water, and that is this water for me. Happy memories of it, and hopefully you can see why. that is something that you don't see every day a heron actually in the water being chased by two others but yeah heron is actually fully in the water I so that's not something you see every day at all the beauty about when it goes flat calm you get to see all the movement you see there some roach moving close in so there's every chance the waggler line might work and you can just see bubbles out there past our line, which hopefully is not Mr. Carp. And you just see all the movement. And you know it's a, a fertile water because you've got loads of grebes, you've got herons, you've got the odd cormorant landing here and there and taking off. Not loads, but just lets you know there's a good population of fish. And one thing about this water, there is no Mr. Pike. Now, that's where them predators that I just mentioned come to play. They keep the quality of the fish up, they're nice and healthy, and you don't get any that are not in good condition. I so say the cormorants you've got to keep on top of, most definitely, but the others, they just keep the population healthy. So with that wind dropping, took advantage of getting the waggler out. Fishing the feeder is great fun, but catching roach on the waggler, on a reservoir, even better. You see there that floats buried straight away and that is the beauty of the waggler over the feeder and say goes almost instantly and it doesn't take too long when they're that size to have a really nice net at the end you see there just buried another roach it is beautiful just fishing for them like this and I say if you can get them I know it's Mr Perch <laughs> a surprise six to ten years ago when I last fished on here you didn't catch perch and now they're obviously established and of a nice size and who knows what size perch could be out there There you go, there's another one. And say, we used to wade out over there and do this, but I say, this is a right little fine, this swim. If you can get these this close in, and say, proper quality. And what a way to spend a Sunday afternoon fishing for roach on the waggler. There's another one. That one was just coming on the drop, most definitely. There's another one, just changed over to corn that time. Um, just seeing if it brings out a better quality and keeps the quality up, but yeah, it's a lovely fish.
So I'll quickly go over the setup on the Waggler. I'm using my 13 foot Cordum Glide. Got that teamed up with a Cordum Switch Reel. And on there, I've got five pound line. Down to a Drennan Vizzy Wag. You can see there, three gram. That's locked in place with some Dinsmore shot. And I've got some of the rubber float stops there as well. Just reduces the pull on them weights when you're getting a bite and doesn't make them ping off as much. That's down to a tiny number eight shot on the line and a size 12 hook that sits on the bottom has a bit of an anchor and yeah as soon as you get a bite it zooms under or you get a tiny lift as they lift the shot well eventually it's happened and we've hooked into something that isn't mr roach <laughs> almost certainly i think gonna be mr carp or a world record roach the beauty when this happens is obviously you've got plenty of water to play with it's just whether you've got enough line because they can just keep going and we are only on a three pound duck link so i'm just going to concentrate and try and do my best to get it in so the way he shot off i almost certainly thought it was mr carp but another species that's grown in size since i was last on here is mr tench and what a welcome bonus fish that is we won't keep him out too long and we'll get him straight back but yeah bonus fish of the day mr tench been getting steady bites and conditions as you can see I've changed and should be better for the roach fishing but that's gone a bit quiet it's been a bit of commotion on the beach <laughs> to say the least and the police are coming about that but yeah just good to be getting a few bites minding my own business and having a good time fishing and after that commotion has died down the fish definitely did spook off it but now it's quieting down a bit kept the bait going in the fish have slowly moved back in them what lovely quality that is. It's taken a while for it to calm down since that commotion, but what a lovely roach that is. So for the last little bit of the session, I've gone over to the feeder and just started picking up a few more bites. Saving probably five or six casts to get them going again. It not take too long for that tip to go around with another roach. And we started on the feeder and we're gonna end on it. And what a lovely roach to end on. Let's take a look at that final net and see how we've done. So the beauty of fishing in the water, you can just transfer the keep net to one of the big Dinsmore nets, lift it up. You can see there, <laughs> plenty of bites, struggling to hold it up. A lovely day's fishing. What we'll do now, we'll let them all go. Off they go. I wanna thank you all very much for watching. It'd be great if you could like and subscribe. Tight lines in your own fishing. And I'll catch you all next week. Tight lines.